These video modules have been created at the Pacific Institute of Languages, Arts and Translation to help trainers and translators in the Pacific who want to learn more about their languages and linguistics. In this video, we will look at how different languages talk about purposes, that is, the reasons that people have to do what they do. The differences between languages mean that sometimes we have to reorder whole sentences when we are translating purposes. Look at these two sentences in English. I went to town and saw my friend and I went to town to see my friend. Think for a moment about what the difference is between these sentences. The difference is that in the first sentence we don't know if I had made any plans to see my friend or not before I went to town. Perhaps it was just an accident that I met him in town. In the second example, you know that I was thinking about meeting my friend before I went to town. It was something I intended to do. Or, we could say it is the purpose for me going to town. Let's look at these sentences in a bit more detail. In both of these sentences there are two clauses. That is, two parts of the sentence including their own verb. In both cases, the first clause is about going to town. I went to town. Also in both sentences, the second clause is about seeing my friend. Either saw my friend or to see my friend. So, how do we know from the second sentence that I had been thinking beforehand about going to see my friend? That this was the purpose for going to town? Whereas in the first sentence, this is not necessarily the purpose for going to town. One of the reasons is that there is a different form of the verb see in both sentences. The verb form is saw in the first sentence and see in the second sentence. However, the biggest clue that the second sentence has a purpose is the use of the word to. This word is a very important clue in English that we have a purpose coming up. It will explain what someone's thinking was when they did something. In this lesson we will be talking about how to translate purpose clauses like this into languages of Papua New Guinea and the Pacific. This can be very difficult in some languages because in some cultures it isn't common to ever talk about why someone does something or what their intention is. Because people's thinking and reasons for doing things are hidden inside their minds, it is not common in those languages to talk about them. In other languages it is possible to talk about purposes, but we need to change the sentence quite a lot. So first let's make sure we understand the idea of purpose clauses and look at some more English examples. Purpose clauses explain why someone or something did something. But more than that, purpose clauses tell us what someone was planning or thinking beforehand when they did something. They tell us what the person's intention was. Look back at our earlier example. I went to town to see my friend. In this sentence, we can see the main action that happened is that I went to town. This is called the main clause. Then, the to see my friend part tells us my purpose in going to town. We have other ways to say this in English. We can say, I went to town in order to see my friend, where the words in order to tell us it is a purpose. Or, we can say, I went to town so that I could see my friend, and the words so that tell us it is a purpose. Notice that in English, if we change the order of the clauses and say, to see my friend I went to town, it does not sound natural. In natural English, the purpose clause always comes after the main clause. However, in many Pacific languages, it is much more natural to say the sentence this way around. Think for a moment how to say this in another language that you know. Try translating, I went to town to see my friend, and also, to see my friend I went to town. Think about which one sounds more natural to you. Now let's look at some examples in Pacific languages. We'll start with some sentences from Enga, a Trans-New Guinea language, and the main language of Enga province. 
we're going to look at the difference between two sentences that mean something like the English sentences I came and helped you where there is no purpose we do not know whether I planned to help you or not and I came to help you where we know that my purpose was to help you that is I planned beforehand to help you in the first case in anger we say namba me ipupala emba nisalo which we would gloss as I came and helped you the order of the clauses here is the same as in English with the clause about coming before the clause about helping however when we want to show that the purpose of coming was to help you then we say namba me emba nisalo ipo which we gloss as I you to help came notice that now the order is different to English the main verb is now at the end of the sentence and the purpose clause comes before it this is very important for translation if you do not change the order of the sentence then the meaning in anger will just be that the two things happened it will not show that I was planning to help you when I came consider an example related to Bible translation Mark 6 verse 46 says that Jesus went up a mountain to pray when we look at this sentence we need to realize first of all that there is a main clause Jesus went up a mountain and there is a purpose clause he went up in order to pray that was his thinking beforehand when he went up the mountain if we keep the clauses in the same order in anger we might get something like this Jesus you manda mendenya pupala lomasia but this is not a good translation even though it follows the same word order because it just tells us that Jesus went to the mountain and then prayed it does not tell us that his purpose was to pray when he went up the mountain in order to translate the purpose correctly as a purpose in anger we need to bring the clause about praying before the clause about going up the mountain so that the sentence says Jesus loma sala you manda mendenya pea Jesus to pray went to that mountain notice that now the main clause is at the end of the sentence and the purpose clause comes earlier in the sentence we have just given examples from anger but this translation problem is the same for most languages that usually have the verb at the end of the sentence these languages are marked on the map in blue when the verb comes before the end of the sentence such as the languages marked in red here it is usually possible to leave the purpose after the main clause when you are translating from English let us review the main points of this lesson when you see the words to or in order to before a verb in English they are usually a good clue that you are looking at a purpose clause they show someone's intention for doing something for example we looked at the sentences I went to town to meet my friend I came to help you and Jesus went up the mountain to pray each of these begins with a main clause and is followed by a purpose clause and this is shown by the word to in English the purpose usually comes after the main clause but in many Pacific languages you must put the purpose before the main clause so for our final translation tip when you are translating look out for words like to or in order to to find purpose clauses in English if your language usually has the verb at the end of the sentence try putting these purpose clauses before the main clause and see if it sounds more natural in Bible translation this will mean you sometimes have to join two or more verses together to translate a sentence well in your language